All right, guys, the driver swing versus the iron swing. We all want to know that question. What's the real difference? What are the, the different swing thoughts that we have to have with the driver versus an iron? I'm going to go over those today. It's going to make it so much easier to know what to do with the driver, hit it a lot farther, hit it a lot straighter, and then be able to switch over when you get to the fairway and hit those iron shots. Let's go and get started. Hi, guys. So let's start out by talking about the major difference, which is the iron shots or all of your shots that are off the ground, the ground is in the way. So we have to do things a little bit different. If we could tee up all the balls, we'd basically swing exactly the same with every club in the bag. But unfortunately, we can't tee up everything. We have to hit some off the ground and we have to make some changes for that. So when you're hitting a driver, ideally what you're doing is you're swinging on the upswing. So as you're coming into this ball, the club is rising up and you're, you have a little bit of de-loft on the club so a little tiny bit of forward shaffling, but not a ton on there. And I'll get to that later in this video. But the main idea is, if you can imagine this like a circle, my club comes down, it reaches its low point somewhere around here, and then starts to move back up as it's hitting the ball. That helps the ball to launch higher. That helps you to get more distance, and it really helps it to cut through the wind if you can get the right loft on the club too. So that's a big key there. Now with an iron, we don't have that luxury. Because if I was to say swing up into an iron shot, well, I'm gonna hit the ground back here and then be coming up into it. There's just no room for that. So with an iron shot, you can imagine, I'm gonna be hitting on the, down, the downward swing of this hula hoop or this circle here. So as I'm coming into the downward swing, I'm making ball first contact. My club continues to go down, but very shallow, and then comes back up the circle in front of it. So one of the key things here that we talk about in the top speed golf system, we talk about on the website, is that if I'm hitting an iron, what the pros are doing to make this so much more consistent is they're actually doing something we call impact glide. And what this means is with an iron shot, you have more forward shaft lane, you have a bigger angle of lag here, and your legs are a little bit bent, your hands are low. As that club, as your hands start to turn upward, the club is moving down and it actually comes in very level with the ground. Imagine there's a, this circle or this hula hoop you have kind of a flat spot at the bottom of this circle as the hands move up and the iron continues on the downward strike. Now to exaggerate this to get this feeling, I'm gonna imagine that my hands are really low. Let's go ahead and get this club on the ground. Watch the head of the club. It's gonna remain level with the ground this entire way. So my club head moved level with the turf. That was only possible because I had a ton of forward shaffling and my hands were very low. And then watch my hands start to turn back up to keep that club level. That happens a little bit in a normal golf swing. It's only a small amount, but essentially the butt end of this club is turning back up to flatten that out. You get that nice, crisp, clean contact when you're doing that. So that's a little bit different than a driver. So the, the other difference there, we're gonna play it a little bit farther back in our stance, whereas this is gonna be my iron ball position. For me, this would be kind of a stock iron ball position. If I'm playing a driver, I'm gonna move that ball position all the way up onto kind of the end step of my front foot. So it's a good four to five inches farther in front. And again, that's gonna promote hitting down on the iron and hitting a little bit up, further up in that, that circle with the driver. So let's go ahead and try one out here with that impact glide. I'm gonna show you guys exactly how that would look in slow motion. All right, so you can see with this shot, I got my divot there with an iron, but notice how it's nice and shallow. That's that impact glide again. I wasn't chopping down into the ground. My club is hitting the ground, but it's nice and shallow. Let's do the same thing again. You still have a little bit of that with the driver. So the driver, you do have lag. Those hands are working back up, but you're not hitting down. You're more in the upward swing. A lot of that is just because the ball is farther up in the stance. So on my flight scope on the last swing, that was a negative 7.2 angle of attack. So that means I'm hitting down negative 7.2. Now with the driver, we're gonna tweak that a little bit. We're gonna play the ball farther up in our stance we're still gonna have that, what we call impact glide. We're just not gonna hit the ground. And we can kind of imagine that driver's kind of working level with the ground. It starts to work back up here and it's really gonna help us to be nice and consistent there too. So let's go ahead and give a whirl with the driver. I've changed my ball position. Essentially everything else feels the same. Although I may feel like I'm a little bit farther behind the ball, again, to feel like I'm going a little bit more up and I can get some more distance that way. Let's go ahead and give it a whirl here. There we go, hit that one great. Right down the middle of the fairway, nice power fade. Let's take a look at what my angle of attack was. I definitely felt like that was on the upward swing. And again, teeing the ball forward, feeling like you're a little farther behind the ball 
with the driver is completely fine. That one, my angle of attack was positive 3.7. So I went down seven on the iron to up almost four with the driver. Hit that one pretty daggone good. 115 club head speed, 295 carry, 324 after the roll. I'll take that all day. All right, now the next piece is gonna be how far do I swing back? This is a longer club. I obviously wanna get maximum distance with the driver. The farther I can make my backswing, the longer I can turn my hips, my shoulders, my hands, and the longer the club goes back, the farther in general I'm gonna hit the ball. So typically we like to see the driver somewhere around parallel or even a little bit past parallel. Now there's great drivers out there that stay well short of parallel with the driver, and that's okay too. The main thing is, I've got to make sure that I really rotate my body. Look at my shoulders. They're really getting wound up. Now, if I was here, kind of like a JB Holmes, and I really got a good shoulder rotation, I'm still going to have plenty of power. I'm still going to get that lag on the downswing. I'm really going to be able to crunch the ball. If I swing a little farther back, though, with my club, I get a little bit more distance. So JB Holmes or John Rahm or somebody that has a shorter backswing, if they took it a little farther back, they'd probably pick up a mile an hour, maybe two miles an hour of swing speed but they're comfortable with their swing. They already have tons of swing speed, so it's really not that big of an advantage. If you're looking for all out power, you're gonna go farther past parallel. That's gonna get you a little bit more speed, but just be careful with that. The longer I make my club go back, I can get a little bit of inconsistency there. So it's all about finding the balancing act of what's right for you. So essentially, if we just want a blueprint of kind of what's normal or what's kind of typical, the driver's gonna be almost back to parallel. As you get to your irons, especially as you get to a wedge, it may be a little bit short of parallel. So if you look at this B-roll footage, you know, I may see the driver getting almost right at parallel, maybe a little bit past. And if I'm hitting my wedge, it's gonna be a little bit short. I felt like I'm taking the same swing, but just because I'm making an easier swing with a wedge, I'm not trying to go out all out distance. It just naturally goes a little bit shorter back. All right, now the third change is, or the third difference is gonna be de-lofting the club. If we take an iron, a typical PJ Tour player is gonna de-loft the club roughly about 30%. So if we have a pitching wedge, that has, you know, depends on the club that you have, but that's gonna typically have about 45 degrees aloft or so. Some are a little bit more, some are a little bit less. So I'm taking almost, you know, 12 to 15 degrees aloft or forward shaft lean when I hit this ball uh, at contact. As you get into longer irons with less loft, you still have forward shaft lean, just not quite as much as you did with the shorter clubs, the wedges. The reason for that is, as I'm coming through contact, if I can de-loft this club and have some forward shaft lean, now my hands where I'm putting force into the, into the club is in front of the ball. It's leading the way. So I'm kind of pulling this. I wouldn't say it's necessarily a pull straight. It's actually a pull almost this direction. I'm pulling up on the butt into the grip, but that's leading the way. Some of the mass of my club head is just trailing behind. It's gonna be way more consistent. The second thing, second reason there is Let's imagine that I have this club and it's wide open and the face is just pointing toward the sky. If I hit this ball, it doesn't matter if I swing 200 miles an hour, which would be impossible, but let's say I could swing 200 miles an hour, that ball is not going very far. It's gonna slide across the face, float up in the air, and you're not gonna get very much distance. The more I de-loft this club head, the less and less loft that I have, now the more compression, the more ball speed, the faster the ball is gonna jump off there and it's gonna have a lot more power. So that's one of the reasons that pros typically hit their irons really far. Obviously, they're swinging fast. I think a typical six iron is about 95 miles an hour, but they're also de-lofting that six iron. So if you're a flipper, you're scooping the club a little bit, they're hitting it like this, you're hitting it more like that, possibly if you're flipping a little bit. And even if the same swing speed, even if the two of you are swinging exactly the same swing speed, they're gonna hit it 15 or 20 yards further. They're making that six iron into a five iron or a four iron, or they're making that pitching wedge into an eight iron, if that makes sense. So let's go ahead and take a look at this one. And what you'll notice is right at contact, if we kind of freeze frame here in the slow motion video, you're gonna see I have a decent amount of forward shaft lean with this seven iron. So now let's talk about the same thing with the driver. You're, again, you're doing the same motion. You're still getting that impact glide but you're a little tilted back farther away. So your body's angled back from the target a little bit more. Your club is releasing. So I, in relationship to my body, if my body is angled up here, in relationship to that, my hands are kind of in line with that, but my club head is trailing behind. But because it's farther in front, because this ball's farther up in front, instead of being de-lofted here, it's releasing that loft. And now, even though the hands feel like they're leading the way, 
the club is actually level or the shaft is actually level. Maybe you have one or two degrees of forward shaft lean. Maybe you don't have any forward shaft lean, but you can see in these slow motion videos when we pause those for side by side, there's definitely a lot more with the iron compared to a driver as far as how much forward shaft lean you get. But from there, the key is I want to have the same feelings in my swing. I want to feel like my hands are leading the way, but just because the ball is farther up, it's just impossible to actually make that happen. All right, so the last piece is, the question I get all the time is, why can I go to the range, I hit my seven iron, my eight iron, I hit 20 or 30 shots in a row, they're all going great. I hit my driver and it just goes all over the place, especially when I get on the course, it's just so inconsistent. Well, there's a few reasons that this is happening. Number one, the driver has less loft on the face. So if you imagine there's no loft on this face at all, if the face is open or it's closed at impact, that's getting direct side spin on the ball. So if the club face is maybe two or three degrees open, that's gonna be a little bit of a slice or a decent amount of a slice on a driver. If I do the same thing with a, with a pitching wedge and that face is two or three degrees open, that ball's almost gonna be dead straight. It's not gonna hardly curve at all. When you start getting the face six, seven, eight degrees open, that's a big slice. You're gonna be well in the trouble, almost going out of bounds, uh, depending on how hard you're swinging. With a pitching wedge, again, that's almost on the green. So that's a big thing. Just realize you gotta hit a lot more drivers. You gotta get your feeling with your driver. That's a club that you really wanna practice with a lot. And it's just gonna show up the errors that you have in the swing. So if I'm not making the best swing, it's gonna show up a lot more in this than it is with the wedge. The second piece is gonna be that it has a lot more speed. If I hit this ball, let's go ahead and try to hit one pretty hard here and I'll see how much ball speed it has and what the carry distance is with this swing. There we go, really hit that one good. So that ball came out really fast. Again, if it starts just a few degrees to the right or to the left, over that long distance, that spreads out farther and farther and farther. So your pitching wedge only goes 100 and whatever yards. It's not going far enough to get into the trouble. If you hit it a little bit to the right and it went 300 yards, you're much farther off the center of the fairway. So that club, that ball came out of there 118, 117.9 club head speed. 296 carry, 330 total distance. So my face and path had to be dead on. My face angle or my path of my, that I was swinging was 2.2 degrees left, so almost dead square. And my face was 0.3 degrees in the same direction of my path. So that's just a little tiny cut swing. We're talking 0.3 degrees difference in the direction I was swinging and the direction the face is pointing. And if you look at that drive, that had almost five or 10 yards of cut on it. So the bigger the difference that you have, the more it's gonna move with the driver. The last thing with the driver that's pretty interesting here is that if you hit off the toe, so let's imagine I hit this ball, you know, well off the toe here, what happens is the, the driver head spins open and it twists a lot. And that actually causes hook spin and your ball starts to curve significant, significantly to the left. So if I hit it dead center, that's going dead straight if I'm swinging dead straight. If I hit it an inch off the toe, that's a 20 yard hook, probably somewhere around in that area. If I hit it an inch off the heel, I'm gonna lose a ton of distance and it's gonna fade a little bit too. So just realize that with the driver. I think most people are much too hard on themselves with the driver. Realize it is just tougher to keep it in play. Work on those fundamentals and you're gonna get to where you can hit any club in the bag nice and straight. I right, guys, hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, I got an awesome bonus for you. One of the big keys to being able to hit a good driver or a good iron is to have that impact glide like we talk about. So those hands are working up, the club is working level with the ground, so I'm not chopping down into it with the irons, I'm not hitting down into it with my, my driver. Everything is nice and smooth. My hands are in front, so I get really consistent contact. And that happens from the straight line release. So in the top speed golf system, we talk about how we need to release this club about four feet in front of your contact point. And if I focus on this, things start to happen a lot easier. So I'm gonna play a preview of one of the best straight line release videos I have. It's gonna get you started with that idea, start to get more consistent. Just click on the card up in your screen or down below in the description, click on the link there. You'll get instant access to that video, plus five videos from our top speed golf system. Let's go and get started. Let's get that impact glide and that straight line release going really well for you. Misconception I see is that we want to create lag and we just want to hold that lag all the way on through contact and get as much lag as we can coming through contact. And that's simply not true. In the release section, we're going to talk about how to turn that lag into energy, how to turn that into speed so that you can hit it very far and do it, like we mentioned, without hardly any effort at all. 
and as we're coming through contact, we're gonna fully release this angle as we're about 45 past contact. So if I draw you know, a 45 degree angle, I should be looking at both arms, nice and straight, the club splitting those arms, so that by releasing the club, by getting this angle to release as we're coming through contact, that's what's gonna create the speed. Our hands are moving a very short distance, our club is moving a very long distance through contact, and it creates that whip-like effect. Very different swings hitting the exact same position. So first, let's take a look at Dustin Johnson releasing the club 45 past. And the reason we're gonna see such similar, or such different swings producing similar positions is that this is the real physics of how this has to happen. Here, we're looking at Sergio Garcia. Again, we're gonna to see tons.